Returning to Colombo is, for me, a time warp. This is the place of my childhood. The city has grown, the buildings have changed, but at its heart, Colombo feels the same. I played in these streets, made friends with these families. This was my home at the most important time of my life. In the 1950s, my dad moved to England, met my mum, fell in love, got me. When I turned four, he decided Blanca was a better place to bring family. So he drove us through England, across Europe, the Middle East and India to the edge of Blanca. Ventura dad loaded a horse van onto a barge and so began a new life in Colombo. I loved it. The sound and the colour and the memories of this place probably mean more to me than anything. This was the big day out for a Sri Lankan boy. It was only a short time ago that this park was closed to the public and surrounded by barbed wire. It was the war. What's incredible is how quickly Colombo has bounced back. And right here, Goreface Green is almost identical to the way I remember it as a kid. Dad threw his weight around here, literally. He was one of the local wrestlers. And to be the son of the toughest guy on the green, well, how proud was I? He was a champion wrestler in Sri Lanka, and uh, the reason he chose it wasn't, wasn't for sport and wasn't for any of those things. It was because he was really sick. He had malaria, and his mother didn't know what to do. And so he met this guy called Marshall on the beach, and he said, come and wrestle with us. You'll, you'll get fit and strong. So he started and uh, fell in love with it, was chosen to go to the Olympics. Since my dad died around 15 years ago, I've come to realise what an enormous influence he's had on everything I do. It's because of him I'm a proud Australian and a proud Sri Lankan. And it's because of him I became a chef. You see, Dad taught me whenever you cook or eat food, you must always do it with love. happy to be back on my favourite beach. So I'm cooking grilled banana prawns with a black pepper and curry leaf sauce. So I've got these wonderful little Bombay onions, have to be chopped up really, really fine. And this is a sauce that you have to cook down, it takes time. It's like lots of food. Some ginger. Garlic next. I'm using long red chilies because I don't want it to be too hot. Again, everything needs to be really, really fine. The reason is this sauce is basically cooking everything down to a paste. I'm, I want to dissolve all of these aromats so that it's just a beautiful, rich, thick, tasty sauce. Now, what I'm going to do with this is just fry it in some vegetable oil. Just a little bit of oil. When the oil's nice and hot, I'm going to add some curry leaves. I'm going to put all of these onions and garlic and chilli and ginger into here. Nothing like the smell of frying garlic. You can attract people from miles away with that smell. It's just wonderful. The onions now are going translucent, so now I add my butter. And you can see how much butter I'm putting in. This is the base of the sauce. Once this goes in, I turn it down because I don't want to burn the butter. I want it to basically become the gel, the paste that sort of binds and brings this whole thing together. It's melted nicely, and now I'm going to add all my other ingredients. Sugar. And you see why I add sugar? Because I'm also putting some fish sauce. So we're balancing that sweetness with the saltiness. 
Soy sauce, I'm using a combination of light and dark soy sauce. And that'll give it a really rich colour. Oyster sauce, which will balance it and add a little bit of sweetness. Black pepper, it's black pepper and curry leaf sauce, so don't hold back on the black pepper. A little bit of salt. And a stir. What's happening? This whole sauce is going to emulsify. So once all the butter is melted, I'm going to turn it right down, put a lid on it. Now I'm doing the garnish using this incredible device, which I think was invented here. And there's quite a few coconut scrapers. Stand up, sit down, electric. Uh, this is my favourite. We've got one at home that's 40 years old, still going. So, grate a coconut, hold it tight, and just spin the dial. And you end up with a beautiful, fresh and sweet and juicy flesh. Next is the pomelo. Now, what I want from this is not the actual segments, but the individual little pearls that are inside. Separate them all, and they're going to be sprinkled through. It's going to add that little zest in. Now, these banana pearls just about little salt pepper. What I make the oil is hot now. It's important because if it cools down, what you're going to have is basically prawns boiled in oil. I want them to be fighting against the oil and just crisping up nicely on the outside so that they've still got a nice crunch to them. So, I'm just intertwining the prawns. They're hot. Now my sauce has tons and tons and tons of butter on top of it, which is good. We wanted that, but I'm just taking some of it out. And then I'm just going to spoon it over the top. So I'm mixing the coconut and the onion together. Some chilli for colour and flavour. This pomelo, which I just sprinkle through. It'll be one of those things when people put it in their mouth they think, wonder what that is. But there'll be a beautiful acidity to it as well. And then these wonderful curry leaves, just sprinkled all over. Adds colour, but they're great to eat as well. Very simple dish on the beach. I could handle this right now with a few beers. My prawns with black pepper curry leaf sauce. Back in the 60s, our life in Colombo was pretty basic, but we had more than most. In fact, we had nannies and cleaners who actually lived with us. We've got a tuk-tuk through the back lanes and uh, coming to a place and to meet a lady that's uh, very special to me. She was my nanny when I was a kid. She cooked for me, she cared for me. And um, I haven't seen her for quite a while, so I'm really looking forward to um, giving her a big cuddle. I'm going to check her out. Hello. Hello, Peter. <laughs> How are you? From long time. Long time. Nice to see you. Good to see I'm you. Here. Yeah, it's true. Nice to see you. Are you well? When I was 12, we left to live in Australia. That meant my old nyana lost her job. Dad worried about her, so he bought her a spice grinder and set her up in business. Today, she's regarded as one of the best spice suppliers in Colombo. So now I have all the spices I need for the rest of my culinary adventure. It's time to shop for cooking supplies at Colombo's biggest market, Peta. I'm just following her. I'm not quite sure where we're going. She knows her way. When she was my nanny, Prema made lots of different curries. One in particular was my favourite. 
vibrant, crazy. I've decided to cook here. I've got Nana, my nanny, who's going to help me and probably tell me what to do. And we're going to make breadfruit curry. Breadfruit is a, is a beautiful fruit. How big shall I cut it? By this, by this. And this is such an easy recipe as well because it's a matter of getting all of these beautiful fresh fruit and vegetables and throwing them into the pot and bringing them to the boil. Two or three chilies, it depends on how hot they are. Pandan, curry leaves, three cloves of garlic. And then I put the second extract of coconut enough to cover all the breadfruit and then turn it on. The flavour of curries is very individual, you know, and as each household kind of has a slightly different variation, this is ground up mustard, isn't it? Yeah. White mustard seeds. Uh, Turmeric, cumin, roasted, coriander, salt. My grandmother and her daughters used to all cook and one daughter would add just a little bit like that and then someone else would go, not enough, add a little bit more, she'd walk away, my grandmother would come back, add a little bit more. Now I normally throw the cinnamon sticks in whole, but Prem has just pulled it all to pieces and that's great, it sort of disperses the flavour through the, through the dish. We need to cover it and wait until it comes to the boil. So the next stage is something that's done a lot in Sri Lankan food, it's called temperadu. Basically tempering or adding crispy fried spices into a curry to give it that last boost. Mustard seeds first, and what we're doing with them is they're going to start popping. It's like popcorn, they come up. So be a little bit careful because you can get burnt. Here they go. Stand back. Curry leaves. And before the curry leaves brown, quickly put the onions in. Fry that around. I think we're pretty much ready to go now. So basically that's the dish. You don't need to boil it anymore. The oil was hot enough and it's actually reacted against all the, the coconut cream and everything else. It's fantastic, it's ready to serve. My timing is excellent because it just so happens that we're filming in Colombo on a day when people from all over Sri Lanka gather here at the Kalania Temple to celebrate the full moon. And you know it's a special day by the number of elephants they've brought in. 40, that's a big deal. the elephants now so the time's getting close to this great procession the Kalania Parahara once a year on a full moon the excitement here is great Sri Lankan culture is strong over the centuries it's been influenced by various invaders but at its core it really doesn't change much and it is all about family spirituality and of course food one of my childhood memories are of this cuddly, it's called. Chickpeas cooked with chilli, coconut, and uh, all mixed together and then stuck into a bag. I, I, I love it. Thanks. See ya. Check this out. It's great food everywhere here. It's a uh, tobacco leaf, coconut, flavouring, a little bit of lime that they use to whitewash walls. You stick it all in your mouth. It's got a bit of sweetness to it. And then you spit blood. <laughs> Not really, but red colour comes out of your mouth. That's why you might notice a lot of these people have red mouths. That's the reason. Can I have one? Can I have one? It doesn't taste like I remember, actually. <laughs> I have to speak quite soon, but... The colour got me. I think it did every time. Let's go find some more food. These festivities are a warm up to the main event. Eventually, dance troops and elephants in dazzling outfits and worshippers in their hundreds of thousands will march and dance around this beautiful temple. It's Kelania's biggest day of the year. My 
Austrian mum was brought up as a Catholic and dad was a Buddhist. So I'm pretty open-minded, but I do remember a lot of the stuff that dad taught me about the Buddha. This tree is 2,000 years old. It was one of 36 seedlings brought here by Lord Buddha. The ritual that is carried on here has been going on forever. They bring buckets of water, walk around the tree three times, and then place the water down a chute, straight in to feed the roots of this amazing tree. The feeling here is unexplainable. The smells are beautiful, and I feel so privileged to be here. It's funny how this stays with you, deep inside. I came here to film a Parahera, but I got so much more. I, I just thought I was going to put some water into a, into a tree, but it had a fairly serious effect on me. As I walked around, people were touching the bowl, wishing good wishes, I guess trying to get some, some, uh, some of my luck, or what, I'm not really sure what, but that was pretty damn amazing. A recipe for me as a tribute to the Kalania Temple. I want to cook a dish that is simple but very special. Very special because cashew nuts, number one, are a very expensive item here. But also, I want to give this to the priest. So I'm hoping that uh, a, an offering of, uh, of a beautiful cashew curry will be just the right thing to, uh, to hand over to him. It's very simple, very easy to do. Start off with some onions. Curry leaves. You hear those curry leaves crackle. That's the, that's the best part of it. You know, the oil's nice and hot and ready to go. Give it a little stir. While that's happening, chopping up hot green chilies. Not too fine, but just fine enough so that you can see them through the curry as a flavor and a texture, but also the heat comes through. Some pandan, or rumper as it's called here, which gives a beautiful ar aromatic flavor. So once these onions are frying and the smell's coming out and the curry leaves are crackling and bubbling away, I add my spices. Roasted cumin seeds. So cumin seeds which are then thrown into a pan and roasted and then ground. And I put a teaspoon of that in. Turmeric. Chilli powder, a lot. Everyone likes it hot here, but it's up to you with chilli powder. You put in as much as you like. A nice stick of cinnamon. It just adds a beautiful aroma to it. And then that just gets stirred around nicely. I'm starting to get that aroma as well now from the, from the pandan. It's just lovely. I bought some cashew nuts earlier and soaked them for an hour. The reason for that is so that they soften up, but it also reduces the cooking time. And the reason for reducing the cooking time is that we're using a lot of coconut cream. So coconut cream, if boiled too much, will separate. When the onions are nice and brown and those flavors come through, Add them into it. Now these are the, the, the smells and the flavors that used to come through my grandmother's kitchen. They didn't have to call me to dinner. I came, I just followed the smell. Now, once that's cooked and all the curries have sort of wrapped around the cashew nuts, I've got a first and a second extract of coconut milk. The first extract is used right at the end. The second extract goes in straight away. And now what we do is simply boil it. Boil it and reduce it until you get some thickness to the sauce and then we'll finish it. When the sauce is reduced, I'm going to finish it off with just some, a little bit of coconut cream. Now this is the first extract of coconut, rich and thick and tasty and if you cook it too long it's going to split and look terrible. So it's really important, just put a little bit in, finish it off, give it a nice little stir, bring it up to the boil and it's ready. Very good traditional way of tasting things. Some people say, hmm, not, but I, I love it. I love doing it. Seasoned right at the end, so you've got the great flavour 
and you know how much salt you're putting into it. To serve it up my way, I want to just make a nice little pile in the middle and just a really nice traditional way to serve it to the priests and to anyone really. If you get your hands on some of these chatties at home, they just make such a unique way of serving things and also the flavour that comes out of them if you cook with an open fire is amazing. Now, the last of the coconut cream goes on there and that's just a garnish. It sits on there, it's nice and thick, white, looks really nice. And then I've got some roasted curry powder, which my nana made for me. And it's a whole lot of spices, roasted. And that just finishes it off. It's like a finisher, little garnish on top. You don't stir it through, you just leave it there. Cashew curry for the priest. Can't wait to give it to him. I'm sure he's going to love it. Peter Kuravita, very pleased to meet you. And I just wanted to offer this to you. Thank you. Simple. Beautiful. Yes. Have a pleasure. Really delicious. <laughs> Thank you. I hope so. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. So, with the formalities out of the way, it's time to start the party.